All right, let's take a look here at limits at infinity. So, um, you know, up to this point, depending on where you are, we haven't looked at any limits. So it says x goes to infinity. It's always x goes to some number. So in some cases where the limit goes to infinity. But in this case here, um, we're looking as x goes to infinity. And um, what, what happens with this here is we've got to think, okay, so we have 1 in the numerator, we have x in the denominator. So as x goes to infinity, 1 doesn't change at all because there's no variable there. x continues to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you think of this, this is going to end up being 1 over a billion, 1 over a hundred billion, and so forth. So some of you might think, okay, I know what that's going to end up getting me to, but if you're not sure about that, let's look at a chart here. Say we just start at like something that's not even that big, that's not even close to infinity, but let's just say x equals 10. And what I'll do is I'll look, as x continues to grow, because that's what's happening to x, what is the y value doing? So as x is 10, I plug that in there, and that's just going to be 1 tenth. So I'll represent that as decimal 1 tenth. If I go to 100, which is, you know, growing by quite a bit there, I plug 100 in for x, that's going to be 1 hundredth. If I plug 1,000 in for x, it's going to be 1 thousandth. Okay, oops. And so forth and so on. So if I could continue this and do, you know, 10,000 or whatever I wanted, but what I can see as the x values are growing, the y values are getting smaller and smaller and getting closer and closer to zero. So this limit right here is equal to zero. Okay, that limit is equal to zero. Now we can use this idea to help with certain other limits, like something like this, for instance. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 7 minus 3 over x squared. When I take a look at this limit, I'll just look at the 7 and 3 over x squared separately since they're separated by a minus. So this, the limit as x approaches infinity of 7 is just 7. There's no variable there, so 7 won't change as x goes to infinity. It'll remain the same. Over here, I've got it now so it's 3 divided by x squared, and x is going to infinity. So I've got 3 on top is remaining the same, the bottom is getting huge. So it's very similar to this case here, where the 1 stayed the same, the top and bottom got very big. In this case, the, it's 3 over a very huge number, and this, so this portion will go to 0. So it's going to be, this is going to be 7, this portion right here, this limit will go to 0 as x goes to infinity. So that limit is just 7. Okay. Look at kind of a series of three different examples here. I'll make little changes on each one. Say we start out with this: the limit as x approaches infinity of two x minus three over five x squared plus two x. Oh god. Okay. So. Um, in a problem such as this, where we have a rational function, okay, we can use what we just learned to help us. And what you will do is you will look on the, in the denominator as to what is, where is the, what is the largest exponent. So in this case, it's x squared. That's the largest exponent. So what we can do here is to multiply times 1 over x squared on the top and 1 over x squared on the bottom. And again, I chose x squared because it's the largest exponent in the denominator. This number right here, I ignore the numerator when I'm choosing this number. Okay, I ignore the numerator with that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute times everything. And, and notice, when I multiply by this, I'm just multiplying by 1. So I'm not changing the value, I'm just going to change how things look. Alright, so when I distribute this, 1 over x squared times 2x, so let me just you know, make sure we're clear on that. Multiplying 2x times 1 over x squared. We have an x in the top, we have two x's in the bottom, so that will cancel one of those out, and it'll just be 2 over x. So I have 2 over x minus 1 over x squared times 3 is 3 over x squared. 1 over x squared times 5x squared, that's just going to be 5, because the x squareds will cancel. And here I have plus 2 over x simplifies. It's the same thing as the, uh, this guy right here. 
All right, now what I can do is I can look at all four of these as separate limits. And I can take the limit of each as x goes to infinity. So for 2 over x, I've got 2 is going to remain the same. The bottom x is going to get infinitely large. It's going to be 2 over a huge number. That's going to go to 0. Same idea with 3 over x squared. 5 will just remain 5. You know, there's no variable there, so it doesn't change. And 2 over x will also go to 0. So this limit is just going to be 0 minus 0 over 5 plus 0. That's just going to end up being 0. So that limit right there was 0. All right, I'm going to make a slight change to this. Very similar. I'm just going to make it 2x squared minus 3 over 5x squared plus 2x. So it's the same problem. The only thing I've done is change this exponent right here. But I start the same way because my exponent, my denominator, hasn't changed. So I'm still going to multiply by 1 over x squared. And all these examples will be 1 over x squared. But, you know, if x cubed was the largest one in the denominator, that's what you would divide by. So 1 over x squared on the top and bottom. I go ahead and distribute. So when I distribute on the top, I end up getting 2x squared times 1 over x squared is 2. Distribute right here, I end up getting that is going to be minus 3 over x squared. On the bottom, multiply by 1 over x squared times this guy and this guy. Simplify in the same way, it's just going to be 5 plus 2 over x. Okay, now I take my limit as x goes to infinity. Again, you can see I have a 2 and a 5. Both of those are just going to remain 2 and 5. These right here will both go to 0, so it's just going to be 2 over 5. That's my limit as x goes to infinity. All right, one more here in this series of examples. All right, let's look at 2x cubed minus 3 over 5x squared plus 2x. And again, multiply by 1 over x squared since that's the highest exponent in the denominator. You can see here I've just changed this exponent of th to 3. So when I multiply and distribute here, I end up getting this guy, 2x cubed times 1 over x squared is going to be just 2x. Let me make sure I have my limit in there. So it's going to be 2x. And then I multiply again by this, and it's going to be minus 3 over x squared. I multiply 1 over x times 5x squared, and it's going to be 5. 1 over x squared times 2x, that's going to be 2 over x. Now I'm looking at the limit as x goes to infinity. Okay, well, hmm, 2x, let me hold on to that one. These are both clearly going to be 0, as in previous cases. 5 will be 5, so let me just see here. I know I have this at least taken care of, because I can get rid of those two since they're both 0, so it's just going to be 2x over 5. Well, let's think here. As x goes to infinity, okay, what's going to happen to 2x? It's going to be 2 times infinity, you can kind of think, which is just infinity. So this, as x goes to infinity, this is just going to continue to grow forever and ever and ever. You divide it by 5, but it's still going to grow forever and ever. So this right here is going to be infinity. Or you could have put does not exist, because we should know that when you put infinity, it means the limit doesn't exist since it's approaching infinity. Okay, so the reason why I did these three cases right here, okay, is because from these we can come up with three, um, three rules that will always work here, as long as the limit's going to infinity, okay, make sure you don't confuse this and use it when it's not going to infinity, when you have polynomials on top and bottom like we have here. In the first case, notice, the exponent on the numerator was smaller than the exponent in the denominator. So again, the top, top exponent is smaller than the bottom exponent. It will always be the case that that limit is going to be equal to zero because the bottom gets big much faster than the top does. When the exponent in the top and bottom, the highest exponent in the top and bottom, are the same, you just look at the ratio of the coefficients of those two terms, the two highest terms. Two fifths, that's going to be our answer. Down here, when the exponent in the numerator is larger than the denominator, the top is going to increase much faster than the bottom and get much larger, so therefore, overall, the function will continue to grow and it will become infinity. Or it could be negative infinity as well, but it will be infinite either way, and it won't exist. So, really, you don't have to go through this whole lengthy process of multiplying by 1 over x squared or whatever the highest exponent in the denominator might be. You could just get a problem like this. The limit as x goes to infinity of 
5 minus 2x plus 7x squared over um, 11x squared plus 2x minus 3. And you could look at that and you could say, okay, I see the limit, it's x goes to infinity. You've got a polynomial on the top and bottom. I just got to look to find my highest exponent on the top, x squared, highest exponent on the bottom, x squared. They're the same. So that fit into that middle rule we just talked about, where if they're the same exponent, I just look at the ratio of the coefficients, it's going to be 7 11 Okay? So it's as, it's as simple as that. It's very quick and easy to evaluate these limits. And again, if that maybe had been just x to the first on top, then I would have known that it would have been 0 and so forth. So it's a very quick and easy rule to use, and it works every time, okay, done correctly, which is, you know, easy to do correctly. Let's look at a couple here real quick. If you look at the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine x, okay? So what is happening there? So as, as x goes to infinity, what happens to cosine? So for this one, we should have an understanding of what the cosine graph looks like. Um, so it starts here, and it will go to the left as well, but I'm just going to look as it goes to infinity. And it'll come down and up and down and up and down. It's not a perfect graph by any means. But the idea is, as x increases, which happens when x goes to infinity, the cosine function goes down a negative one, back up to one, down a negative one, back up to one, over and over and over and over and over again, and never settles on a certain y value. Okay, and in order for a limit to exist, it has to approach a certain y value. In this case, that does not happen. Okay, so this limit right here does not exist. Okay, um, one more trig limit here. The limit as x approaches infinity of cosine x over x. So this is just one to think about here. So as x goes to infinity, we just talked about cosine x, how it goes up to 1, down to negative 1, up to 1, down to negative 1. So it stays within a very small range of numbers. The biggest it gets is 1, the smallest it gets is negative 1. It stays in that range. The bottom, x, is going to get huge. So you're going to have something on the top oscillating between negative 1 and 1, and the bottom is going to be gigantic. So the same idea holds true if this was like 1 over x. You could almost just kind of substitute 1 in for cosine since that's the largest it will ever get. And it's like the 1 over x case where you have something that's very small on top, even though it does change in this case as opposed to 1 over x. It changes but very small and it stays within that range of negative 1 to 1. The bottom grows infinitely forever. So you're going to have this very small thing on top over this huge thing on the bottom and it will just be 0.